Welcome to the 10 Minute Treasure. My name is Jeff Pospisil. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I go about setting up my chart of accounts in QuickBooks Online. And at the very end, I'm also going to show you a template chart of accounts that I set up for a church that, and I'll show you how to import it into QuickBooks Online, and maybe it'll give you a head start. All right, so let's get to it. So I typically start setting up my chart of accounts offline, so not in QuickBooks. I wanna actually get a mental map of it. So I, I like to do that in Excel. You can use pen and paper, I've done that as well, but I like to know how my reports are going to look because of my chart of accounts. And that's the important thing about chart of accounts is your chart of accounts determine how good your reports are and how useful they're gonna be. Um, what I typically do is, um, I, yeah, I'll list out what I currently have. We actually don't have these, this many assets. All we have is a checking account right now, but I, I would typically number mine as well because it helps me logically think through it. So I might label my checking account 1000. Let me show you, um, real quickly how to make sure you turn on your numbering in QuickBooks online. I should have been logged in already. I think it timed out on me. So let's go ahead and if you look at, let's see, it's over in the upper right, there's that gear. Go ahead and click the gear. And then under account, account and settings, and then there's advanced. So let me click on that. Let me try it again, I guess. Come on, there we go, advanced. Advanced, it's the third one down, chart of accounts. And there you're gonna see enable account numbers. And it, for me, it just makes it easier to logically see it. Also, it sorts your report by number value then, by the numbers. So um, that way you can determine how you want your report to actually look. I normally start my assets with the ones and I leave plenty of space in between because let's just say, for example, in the future, we end up uh, having two checking accounts. Uh, I don't wanna have to go around and try to renumber everything. I, I just wanna be able to go ahead and add my two checking accounts in here, main checking and my secret checking. And 1005 and 1010, see I had plenty of room to go ahead and do that. I could add in up to 100 checking accounts there if I wanted to. Liabilities normally start with a two. That's what I typically do. Um, and again, leave plenty of space. Normally you don't have very many liabilities. Um, I, you can see I have accounts payable. And actually, if you have liabilities, chances are you're using accrual accounting. Um, I'm not gonna really explain that, but liabilities, though that's what you owe. Assets are what you own. And equity, basically tells you who owns it or what's the restrictions on any of the assets. So there's um, designated, meaning that the, the church leadership has put a restriction on those assets. So let's just say, for example, we set up two new restrictions here, new churches and um, Pro Project X. I didn't have another good one. Uh, donor restricted, that's when the board doesn't do it, the church board doesn't do it, but the donor actually puts the restriction on there. And the reason why that's important is the donor or the board can then remove or adjust the restriction. The donor can adjust the restriction with the consent of the church. Invested in capital assets, that I usually set that up so that uh, it equals whatever I have for fixed assets. And that pulls that out of this unrestricted. So this unrestricted is like your general fund balance. And if you don't pull that out, then it'll look inflated by your buildings and equipment and vehicles and stuff. Um, let me go ahead and number these and again, leave plenty of room. My equity or net assets, those are in the threes. And I normally put my unrestricted near the bottom. And the reason I do this is it's a good reason. It's because this net income that comes over automatically from your profit and loss or statement of activities, whatever you want to call it. Um, it comes in automatically. It's always in your, at the bottom. And that way, when I have something in my unrestricted, so that's prior year's earnings profit, and I have my net income for the current year, then if I add these two together, I know what my general fund balance is at that very moment. 
So, and again, I've removed all the fixed assets, so that's not inflated. And I would be able to see quick and easily what my general fund balance is. And if I uh, have it, um, yeah, if I'm underwater or not. Let's go to the statement of activities or profit and loss or income statement. And I start off very much similar. I start off with my income and whatever income items you want to, to track. And these are all general fund ones. So I, I, I manage my restricted ones elsewhere. Then I like to organize my, I got an alarm going off, sorry about that. I like to organize my expenses by who has authority in that part of the budget. So this might be your staff, pastor, parish part. You might have a part for the trustees and maybe a part for office and so on. Uh, one thing I struggle with then is I know that's good for developing lines of authority and who has responsibility over expenses. But one thing you miss, and this is important too, your leadership needs to be um, aware of always the mission. And I like to tie the mission into my statements. So this one, worship passionately, uh, love extravagantly, and witness boldly. So what would that look like to add this? So I'm just going to go over to, um, here it is. This is the, the bylaws of uh, the Global Methodist that, who I'm working with. And, what, and their conference, again, it says that part of their mission is the mission of the whole overall Global, Me global Methodist. So it's, again, it's worship, love, and witness. Um, and then they do have various, uh, various different boards, Board of Ministry, Episcopacy, and Finance Administration, and some others. And each, each conference is what they call it, will have their own one. But so I do like to set it up. First of all, I'm just going to go ahead. I think I'm just going to delete this. And here's how I would set it up for this ministry. So if yours isn't a church, um, I'm going to quick number these. It was bugging me that I didn't have them numbered. Um, I would go ahead and set it up by committee or whoever has authority to spend that budget because I want them to get reports that would help them make their decisions. So I'm just going to do board of ministry was the first one. And I'm just going to do thing one, thing two, three, three, thing four. So uh, instead of thinking up of items on the fly, I'm going to add one for finance and administration. And copy that as well, thing one, two, three, four. Um, but whatever whatever they wanted to, to see reports on the track. Because part of this is to serve them. Uh, and again, I put with my numbering, I normally start in the fives. I start in the fours for the income, but I start in the fives there and leave, again, plenty of room between. Um, and yeah, I just always like to leave plenty of room because uh, anyway, you really do need to pay close attention. I like to put my most important committees near the top. Or, you know, it could be the ones that you spend the most of out over the ones that you want your leadership to pay the most attention to. So that's why I put like staff near the top. Uh, but again, what do you do about the mission in your statements? And one of the things I thought about is maybe if we turn on classes and start tracking some of our transactions by class, because maybe some are more towards worship or witnessing or loving. And I don't know exactly how this is going to look, but here's how you turn that on. You go again to your accounts and setting and to advanced. And right underneath the chart of accounts, you're going to see categories and you can turn on location or classes. So I already have it on. You can also require a class. So let's say, say every transaction has to have a class. That'd be fine too. Um, you can have it. I like to have it so that I have to have a class for every line instead of every transaction. Um, and then what you might do is, so that would be another one that you put in. So you'd enter the account number and then you could enter a class as well. So worship, uh, what is it? <laughs> now I kind of forget off the top of my head. I'm going to have to remember this. Uh, so let's uh, just type in classes here and oops, clicked on something wrong there. All right. Worship, love, and witness. 
worship, love, and witness. Yeah, that's right. So then I'd be able to run a report which might show the breakdown of how much our board of ministry contributes to each three of these or how much our finance and administration contributes to each three of these. And that would be a, a way of, again, if I don't build it into a report, um, I, I'm probably not going to report on it I, or it's going to be very haphazard. That's the way it is. So that's my current thought is, can I build it like this? And we will see as I go on. So one last thing I want to show you is I'm back in QuickBooks Online and I'm going to show you how to get to the chart of accounts and how to start setting it up. So you can go into this gear, there's a chart of accounts, or if you have this accountant one open, you can go to chart of accounts right there. So accounting chart of accounts. And I'm going to see my chart of accounts and here it is. So this is the default one. And so if I wanted to, what I could do is there is an edit button. So that's the edit. And I could do a mass edit where I can enter in my numbers already. So here's 1,000 checking. Uh, yep, checking. And then here's my checking. My This is my main checking account. So I'm going to put that underneath it because, again, if I want my secret checking account, I can add that in later. And I'm just going to call this main checking. Um, and then I would go ahead and keep numbering these on the way down. And there's going to be a number of these ones that you're going to be like, I don't have an inventory. I, do I need that? Uh, so I'll show you how to get rid of that as well. Uh, but number what you want to keep and then anything else, I'll show you how to hide those. All right. And yeah, I think I'm going to be done here. I can, <laughs> I can number it all day, but I'm not going to. So let's go ahead and save this. So two things I want to show you. One is how do you make a hide one um, and how do you make a sub account? So here's my checking account. Right now it's at the same level as the other checking, but I clicked on it. And you could see all the different uh, things that you could choose. And let's go ahead and go back up. So you can see right here, save account under, and it says bank accounts, and I want it under my checking. So then when I click yes, you'll see that now it's indented a little bit, meaning that it is a sub account or a child of the checking one. And you can do that with your expenses and revenue and all that. Um, now, again, I don't want inventory, so I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. I'm gonna, going to, uh, well, actually, I'm not going to edit. I'm gonna, just going to make it inactive. And that goes ahead and hides it. I don't have to look at it anymore. And yeah, that's that's what I would do with that. So you can go ahead and hide a bunch of those if you want. All right. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of these. So this, this is what takes a little bit of time is cleaning this up because it'll make your life easier going forward. And you can see they already have some sub accounts already set up for payroll. And you might have to move those around. Again, your numbering will help move those around. All right, let's go ahead. I want to show you now how to import a chart of accounts. So I'm back at my main screen. Actually, I'm back at my chart of accounts, at my chart of accounts, but I'm going to flip over real quick. Here is the sample. I've linked this in the description. And this is just, uh, you'll look at it. You'll see my numbering scheme. Um, you'll see that I have some designated. You can change this up how you want to. You can add, remove, um, but I have the main uh, the main categories here all set up. The detail accounts, the account numbers, the descriptions, they're all set up. So you can write over top of this and change it how you want, but try to keep it in the same format. All right, so you can see it just keeps going. Uh, I mean, it, it's pretty complete. So it'll handle a lot of churches, or at least it'll give you a head start. And let me go ahead and switch over to QuickBooks and I'm at my chart of accounts. So I'm going to make that a little bit bigger, but there's this new and import, new and import. And it's going to think for a little bit and then it's going to tell me, I don't even know what it's going to tell me. I'm just going to do it and not read. 
So I'm going to browse for my file. I downloaded it, so it's in my downloads. I'm going to select it. I'm going to go OK, and I'm going to just start it. I'm going to hit the Go button, and it's going to say, OK, it matches it up across these four things. Detail type, that's why I labeled them the way I did. Detail type, account name, account number, and type. So it'll bring all those in. I think you better make sure that you have account number turned on if you want it. Um, and then all I have to do is let's hit the, I think my picture is right over top of this, but you hit the go ahead button and it would go ahead and import all these into QuickBooks. I don't know if there's anything else. I don't want to actually go forward because um, I'm not setting up a church. I'm setting up a different type of ministry. All right, this was kind of a longer video, but the chart of accounts is so important, so important. If you want good reports, you have to have a good chart of accounts. So um, again, your chart of accounts will totally determine your reporting. Um, yeah, that's all I can say about that. Uh, feel free to use and adjust in those sample chart of accounts for a church. And yeah. If this was helpful, like, subscribe, share, comment, all that good stuff. All right, till next time, God bless.